my channel guys today I'm here with Valeria and she's gonna be sharing how she went from being completely miserable and making everyone around her miserable to being a light to everyone around her to being filled with joy and enthusiasm and excitement and so we're gonna talk about her journey through that so we're focusing more on the mental health side today and like you guys know we always talk about faith family or mental health if you're interested in learning more about mental health and interested in learning how to go from your own misery or feeling bad or making other people feel feel bad to joyful and filled with light and encouraging people around you then make sure to give this video a thumbs up so that we know this is something that you're interested in and let's get going so why don't you introduce yourself first Hey, hello guys, my name is Valeria. I'm 18 years old and I'm a senior. I'll be attending Loyola University. Okay, and also let's say how we know each other. Oh yes. So in the private practice that I work in where I'm a registered marriage and family therapy intern, Valeria is... I am the office manager here at the office. Um, I organize things, I make sure that all the paperwork is done, I life coach a little, which is really fun. I get to speak at some events and obviously work with Melissa on our teens group. Yeah, she's so great. Through her own journey, she's come to be working here and part of our team and she's such an asset and we're so sad that she's leaving us for college in the fall, but we're happy that she's here with us now. So why don't you talk a little bit about the part of your life where you were feeling miserable and making others miserable around you? So growing up, I was not a happy person at all. I would always focus on the bad and focus on the misery in my life and granted I was going through some stuff it was pretty bad but it was the only thing I focused on it and it became the meaning of my life and it was something that I just didn't know how to handle I didn't know how to cope with it I didn't have a positive outlet I didn't have anyone to speak to and in turn like it spiraled I would make others miserable and this was over like a two-year span um, I started self-harm um, had some suicidal thoughts, it was really, really dark, and it was something that, it was a hole that I didn't think I could dig myself out of. There was a lot of things going on in your life, and then that was leading you to feel bad, and to think about suicide, and all of these things, and you had mentioned making other people miserable around you, so what did that look like to you? My mentality was, if I'm unhappy, then everybody else should be unhappy. Mm -hmm. So I was the gloom of everyone. If somebody, like, let's say found five dollars on the street, I'd say, like, okay, you're still broke anyway, or when anybody made a happy comment, I would in turn make a sad comment. I literally was just the person that nobody wanted to be around because I was always the negative one. I was mm -hmm. always the one that brought sadness upon everyone. My friends stopped being my friends because, and they told me this, that they were no longer happy when they were around me because I was making them sad and miserable and mm. it wasn't that I was necessarily being mean I was just dragging everybody down like I was down and I wanted everybody to be done with me yeah and it was something that progressed over a span of like two years it was it was dark yeah and your energy was affecting those around you yeah, and sure. then it was affecting your relationships because people no longer wanted to be around you yeah. so how did you get from that place to deciding that you needed to make a change well for me it was definitely there was a breaking point there was a point where I hit rock bottom and I remember thinking to myself, wow, you either have to change or this is going to be the rest of your life. And that was ninth grade when I was a freshman. I actually tried killing myself. Mm. My dad found me and I remember him just like being in absolute shock because he didn't know anything that was going on. And I remember just thinking like, this is not what I want. At the time, I thought I wanted to die. I didn't differentiate that I wanted my current life to end. I didn't really want to die. Mm. Now I know that, but at the time I didn't. And so it was when I realized, wow, if death is your only option, you really need to change. Because if not, this is gonna be the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, and it was then when I realized I really was gonna have to start working towards changing myself. Yeah, and that mindset is so crucial to being able to differentiate that you want what's going on now to be over but you don't want to die, yeah. but that's what you thought was the answer yeah. at the time. Yeah, it was the only way that I saw out. So your dad found you and then you realized like, wow, this is really bad, I need to do something. Yeah. And so what did you do after that? Well, really my first step was telling my dad, hey, I have to go back to therapy. Because mm -hmm. I had already kind of experienced therapy and it just, it wasn't good. The therapist that I had, we didn't have a connection. Mm -hmm. And I felt that she wasn't validating my feelings and I felt like she, 
didn't like me even mm -hmm. and so I was like okay I tried this therapy thing it didn't work and what you just said I wanted to say something about because the number one predictor of whether or not therapy is going to be considered successful is whether or not the client and therapist have a good connection whether they have a good therapeutic relationship because if there's no good therapeutic relationship between the client and the therapist then nothing else that the therapist is doing or that the client is doing is going to matter if that relationship is not there to begin with so that's number one if you don't feel comfortable with your therapist or you feel like she doesn't like you then you're not gonna be able yeah. to get anything out of therapy so I'm so sorry that was your no I didn't but, get anything but then you were yeah. able to find a therapist who you did connect with yes yeah, so my dad he just like randomly was like okay we have a therapy session here at this time and so I went at the time I, I didn't believe in God at the time I was like no but I remember like thinking okay I don't believe in God but I'm gonna pray anyway like I don't know who I'm praying to I don't know what I'm praying to but like I'm praying that it goes well mm -hmm. And so I get there and she is, she's pretty cool. And the thing is, I'm the kind of person, I was the kind of person who, when something is going nice or going well, I like to mess it up a little. <laughs> no, I like to mess it up a little to see how the person reacts. Because okay. it's very easy to like show your best self when things are going great. Mm -hmm. So I remember being like, oh my goodness, and now I have a shrink to see like how she would feel because I remember with my first therapist I called her my shrink and she got so offended mm. and I always I make jokes like that and so I told her that and she thought it was the best thing ever and that's when I started realizing wow like I don't like this girl and then I remember at the end of the session she was like okay so I have some homework for you and I was like homework and she was like yeah you have to work you have to work to get things done you have to work to become the better version of yourself that you want to be she asked me in our first session what do you want to get out of this and my response was to be happy, which in turn her question was, what does happy look like to you? And I realized I didn't know what happy was. Mm -hmm. I had been so depressed for so long that I really had no idea. And I remember answering like, I have no idea. And she was like, well, your first step is to figure that out. And from there, we can go from there. So my first homework was to figure out what happy looked like for me, mm -hmm. what it embodied, what it envisioned. And in that one session that I had, I felt so much better than in the however many sessions I had had before with the other therapist mm -hmm. because I felt like she cared for me and I felt like she really wanted the same thing that I wanted and that she would help me get there. Mm -hmm. So therapy was something that was really impactful for you in the beginning stages of making your life from this miserable state where you were feeling so terrible to a life of joy. Yeah. So you started with therapy and then you mentioned faith. Was that a big part of it? I always thank God because my therapist was the one who got me back into my faith okay. because I remember being in therapy and being like I don't believe in God I believe in a higher power or whatever but I don't believe in God and she I knew she was Christian but she would always make these little comments like oh well maybe there is a God or stuff like that and slowly but surely I was like getting back into it because mm -hmm. I grew up very Christian and as the sessions went on I kind of realized that faith is a lot and it means a lot and I kind of went back to what it meant to me when I was a kid, mm. when I had the faith of a kid, you know? And it was something that now has grown a lot on me. A lot of the things that I go through now, I correlate to God. Mm. And I just do it instantly, which is something that I used to not do. And it's just, it's comforting and it's, it's a rock, you know? And it's something that I love personally. My faith now is something that keeps me situated and rooted in to who I am, mm -hmm. which is something that I didn't have back then. Yeah, and because I know you and parts of your life, share a little bit about how your faith plays a role in like what you feel is your purpose now and how you went from a place of not believing in God to now like it being very central to your life. I began going back to church mm -hmm. the end of my sophomore year, the beginning of my junior year. And I really only went because I'm part of my school's choir and we, to raise funds for a trip, we had to like do the um, concessions like after church where mm -hmm. we set up like a breakfast at the church that I go to. So we had to be there for the whole church service just because at the end we had to be there for the breakfast. And I remember feeling so awkward at that first church service because part of me was like, you don't belong here. You're gonna like go up in flames <laughs> because it had been so long. But at the end of it, I became so relieved because I was reminded that like God was put here to love me. I was put here to love God. And it was through that that I realized I'm here to love and to serve others the same way that God love and loves and serves me. Mm. And that's when I realized what my purpose was. 
I get joy out of making others happy and that's a gift that I've been blessed with because I realize that I'm here to love and serve and my purpose is not to live for myself but for God and for others mm -hmm. and so now as a person of faith it makes me so happy to bring joy to other people and so instead of being a person who is miserable and loves to make other people miserable I've become this person who loves to bring joy to people because it brings joy to me it makes me so happy to see that I'm making others happy right and that's something that I wouldn't have found if I hadn't found my faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you talked about how therapy was a huge help, how coming into your faith again made a huge impact in the joy that you're feeling now. You wanted to give that joy to other people. So was there anything else that was really crucial in that transformation as you went from misery to joy? One of the biggest factors for me was definitely who I began to surround myself with. Mm -hmm. Because I realized when I was miserable, I really would surround myself with people who didn't care about anything that they did with their lives and who were very, very selfish but I remember as I was going through this transition when as I was going through this journey of therapy and faith I met some people who showed me unconditional love right off the bat and I had never been shown unconditional love in my life and it was something that really changed me it was something that made me realize who I surround myself with really impacts my decisions and my choices mm -hmm. if I choose to surround myself with people who are like-minded and like-hearted then I know that it'll be easier for me to do what I was put on this earth to do Whereas if I'm surrounding myself with people who don't have my best interest at heart, then I'm not going to get where I should go. Yeah, and that can be really hard making the transition when you realize that, that the people I'm choosing to surround myself with are actually helping me stay in this constant state of misery. So did you find it difficult to move away from certain people and find a new circle or was it easy for you to do that? Both in a way, there were some friends who I felt I had to be loyal to just because they had been in my life for so long and they had been a part of my life for so long and so I knew that they were dragging me down and I knew that I was gaining absolutely nothing from the friendship and so what somebody told me was that you have friends who are in your life for a reason, for a season, and for a lifetime. Mm. So you have friends who are in your life for a reason, to teach you something, for a season to go with you through certain things but then you eventually grow apart in a lifetime. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that friends actually mattered and so the transition became easier when I began specifying and separating myself from those who really truly cared about me to those who were only my friends because of a condition that they had, you know? So it became easier as I was able to differentiate. Okay. And so what would you say if someone is feeling the way that you were feeling before, maybe self-harming, maybe thinking about suicide, or just feeling miserable all the time, and they know that they bring the energy down when they're around other people. So what would you say to those people that are feeling that way now? Reach out. Really take a step. And I know, I know <laughs> that it's scary because I remember telling my dad that I wanted to go back to ther therapy was like the scariest thing that I've ever done. But in hindsight, it was the best thing that I could have done. And it wasn't easy. It took me four years to get to where I am now. And it really is like the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. But reach out and know that you are loved and that there's people who care for you and that while you might want your current life to end, you have a beautiful life ahead of you. and. This life is gorgeous and it's something that you can't miss out on because it has so much to offer. Mm -hmm. It was possible to end that current life without ending your life. Yes, yeah. definitely. The only person that was in control of ending my life was me and not with death, but rather with change. Mm -hmm. I was able to change everything around me without changing anything. Yeah. You know, when I began changing myself and changing certain factors in my environment. Yeah, I love that. Using change rather than death to end the current state of things and yeah. move forward into the life of joy that you yeah. want. Awesome. So I'm going to put in the description box below a couple different links to different sites where you can search for therapists in your area if that's something that you're looking for. Psychology Today is a great one. If you're looking for a Catholic therapist, there's a website called catholictherapist.com that you can look for someone that shares the same faith as you and I believe there's one for Christianity in general. So I'll link those below. I'll also link down below a suicide hotline if that's something that you're feeling right now I really encourage you to call that might be a really amazing first step for you just to talk to somebody to reach out to share how you're feeling and to ask for help first step like she said reach out ask for help look for someone who can walk beside you and help you get to the life of joy that you are deeply desiring so you can end that current life that you're living and start living the life that you've always dreamed of so we hope that you like this video thank you so yes, much for coming
coming and sharing your story yes. of how you went from misery to joy. And it's amazing because I've only known Valeria in this season of her joyful life. And so it's hard to imagine the life that she was living before. That just goes to show how much of a transformation someone can make in such a short amount of time, a couple of years, right? Yeah. We hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments below if there are any other mental health topics that you're interested in hearing about. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.